Today, what if there was a 30% recession crash correction? What would you do? How would you analyze your portfolio? Well, I'm going to show you guys the different kinds of people, how to make your way through this noise, and then I'm going to update you on my six-figure dividend portfolio in this volatile times. Let's jump right into this. Welcome back, my passive income investor like today. I want to talk about what everyone's talking about and all that crazy paranoia on your minds, which is what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and then we make speculative gambled decisions. We buy assets that don't cash flow. And that's how I used to be, guys. Uh, when I got into investing, I actually bought gold more than I would buy stocks because I was so paranoid of the markets. But my fears and incentives have changed with the knowledge I've gained that I'm going to share with you today, guys. So what would you do if the market dropped 30%? What would you do? How are you preparing for? Maybe you're like a Warren Buffett and you're like, oh, it rains gold when the markets crash. That's when you want to buy everything. So I'm going to hoard cash on the side. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting some cash on the side, but personally, do I leave cash on the side? No, not really. I don't leave too much capital sitting on the side and uninvested. I'm going to explain to you why that is. Now, maybe you're one of those people that thinks you should be shorting the market like the big short in 2008 because you're smart enough to predict the impossible, guys. Uh, maybe that's you. I don't know, but I want to give you guys a couple of examples examples here of how my strategy works and why it's the best strategy and it took me years to come to this conclusion but it starts off with person A and person B. Person A is the person that accidentally buys every top of the market, okay? For the next five years, this person's buying the tops because they get overhyped and they buy the tops. This person, person B here, buys the dips. This person's buying the dips. Every time the markets drop, they buy the dips. Of these two people, who do you think performs better? Probably the person buying the dips. The person waiting for every dip that happens when they see a 5, 10, 15% dip, they just buy, buy, buy. That person, person B, obviously does the best. But there's one person I didn't mention on here, and this person is me. There's an investment philosophy uh, that comes behind who actually does the best. Is it the person that buys the top or the bottom? That's how we are used to thinking. But actually, that's not the reality of it. The person that actually does the best is the person that doesn't care about the tops or the bottoms. They just buy the middle of the market all the time. They buy when it's up and they buy when it's down. And it took me a while, years ago, to figure out why this person performed the best out of everybody else. Well, because they weren't trying to time the market. When you time the market and you're not buying businesses based on cash flow, guys, you're gonna miss the in-between opportunity. So say you're only buying the top of the market. Well, the market keeps going up, obviously, and you're gonna be able to collect dividends. Same on the downside, you're gonna be getting more dividends. But when you're waiting, especially in between both of these, so if you're waiting, to, if you accidentally buy the tops or the bottoms, you're still waiting in between to purchase stocks, which means you're missing out on dividends and opportunities in between. So you're better off doing what we call cost averaging, guys. So the Warren Buffett would be the kind of guy that would sit waiting for the bottom of the market. The idiots are the people that buy the tops, sell the bottoms. The people that win at this game are the people that play the middle. All you have to do, guys, is buy when it's up, buy when it's down. It doesn't matter how much you buy, it doesn't matter how much you sell, it comes down to consistency. The game of stocks is longevity and consistency unless you're trying to gamble. If you want to day trade, you want to speculate, that is not the channel for you guys, especially with me here because I am purely a dividend business investor. P people playing daily volatility, guys, it's not me, okay? If you want to go watch Day Trader, there's a lot of them on YouTube. You can follow them, but they don't care about companies. They just care about scalping. That is your job as a day trader. I'm into buying good businesses for longevity and payments to help cover my bills. That is what a passive income dividend investor does, and this is the best Best advice these people historically have never lost money and have outperformed the people that buy the tops and the bottoms and it's kind of hard to think that well if you're buying the bottoms and the tops how are you beating the guy that's just buying the bottoms because the guy buying the bottoms is waiting to time the market when you're waiting to time the market you don't get dividends you don't get passive income you don't get cash flow which leads you to buying more stocks see I don't leave cash on the sidelines because a lot of people have fear that the markets are gonna crash but in my eyes I don't know when that happens that could be next month that could be five years I've been waiting since the day I got investing in the markets for a crash I've been waiting six bloody years I have been praying for a crash but in the meantime while I wait for it to come I'm just gonna keep buying stocks and when the crash comes my portfolio might drop 30,000 on paper value, might drop 40,000 on paper value, but my guess is those dividends on the companies I own are just gonna keep cash flowing in. I hate when uh, fear mongering starts coming into play, especially because we're starting to speculate. The more fear the market entails, the more people start to speculate. And don't get me wrong, guys, I am literally a guy that was so paranoid of the markets, I had $30,000 in precious metals. 
I had a crazy amount of money in precious metals. I don't want anything to do with that anymore because I found this strategy that took me years to get comfortable with this. Uh, this is just an interesting way to perceive the market, guys. You're buying companies that are hopefully gonna be stable, solid companies. If you're not comfortable buying that, buy index funds, guys. I don't know why everyone thinks they're gonna time the market on the upside and the downside. I guess if you're older and your, your time horizon is a lot shorter, you might be a little more fearful and you might have to take a little bit more precise decisions. You might have to find short options to protect your downside. But if you are as young as I am, guys, if you're in your early 30s, um, early tw anywhere in your 20s and early 30s, guys, you should be playing the long game about trying to cost average in. Even if you want to spend the dividends and not buy stocks with them, you're still better in just buying stocks as often as possible, which is why I buy stocks every month over the month because I plan on constantly cost averaging into the market no matter what. It has led my portfolio to be performing pretty well overall. It's just the way that I've come to see it. And that's why I'm so focused on making sure my dividends get up to that $500 mark a month because with $500 a month, no matter what, if I don't add money to the portfolio, it still will keep buying stocks. And if I have to, I have a cash flow I can tap into at any point in time. It's the reality of being a dividend passive income investor. It's how Warren Buffett works. Now, even Warren Buffett's funny because you can listen to his philosophies, but because he's He's on a level that's so far beyond you, he always has cash on the sidelines. And a lot of people right now might be telling you to have cash on the sidelines, buy gold, buy Bitcoin, buy something that's outside of the market. You can't always be in the market. You should be fearful of the market. I don't believe that is the reality of it. I honestly like, I've come to the, I just, I think it's funny how when people get scared, the whole market gets scared. Everybody, even the smart people start getting paranoid and they start itching. I could honestly be comfortable watching my entire portfolio drop $30,000. If that happened tomorrow, guys, I honestly think I'd be getting paid more in dividends because usually when that happens, the dollar fluctuation changed drastically. And I'm more than confident the companies I own are going to keep paying those dividends, even in those bad times, because most of the companies I own have paid dividends in the worst of times. And most of my companies are recession proof companies. I buy companies that I think have longevity, even in the worst times, like tobacco companies, prison companies, Johnson & Johnson, companies that have historical track records of always paying their dividends, even in the worst of times. In fact, even growing their dividends in the worst of times. As dividend investors, we are not buying the markets based on equity value, unless obviously we're looking for discounts and deals. I try and buy individual stocks that I think are on deals, but I'm always consistently buying and cost averaging into most of my positions at this point. Um, and just like I said, guys, the reason for that is I don't like getting caught up on equity because if the equity drops or your stock value, that price, that little chart comes way down in the short term guys does it really matter so long as you're still getting paid it's a solid company just spend the cash flow it's not that big of a deal but most people get so worked up by this because people are chasing growth stocks when you chase growth stocks and you're mainly a growth investor trying to make 20 percent a year obviously you're going to run into some headwinds and the way the market is headed guys I think, and I've said this before in the past, I actually said this on the first crash, um, I'd have to find the video, but I honestly just, the market is doing this. We're doing the wave, guys. Every time the market goes up, it comes right down. We're not doing any of this. There's no chart going up right now. Our chart looks more like this. We're just trading sideways. Real estate's trading sideways. Stock market's trading sideways. I think that's just the way it's going to continue into the future, which is why I keep mentioning swing trading. I think in times like this is the best time to be a swing trader if you want to try and play the markets because there's just so many companies that you can swing. But at this point in time, guys, I don't recommend personally buying gold or silver. I did that in the past and I learned what a horrible investment idea it was because you only get blimps. Every time gold jumps, it's once. It's once in like five or 10 years and the average rate of return is 2%. Why would you buy an asset that only cash flows 2%? Even Warren Buffett says why like you, you should be buying farms, properties, things that produce food, something that like can actually consistently do something in the longevity aspect of it, whereas gold, you're just gonna coddle it if a recession comes, no one's going to be buying it to, to, you can't, you're not going to walk into a grocery store and say, here's my brick of gold. Can I have some bread? Uh, I don't think that'll be the reality of it, guys. I think if we go back into some great depression, you're going to be more worried about growing food. It's going to be a different ball game. I don't know why everyone thinks it's like the 1930s. I don't think gold has the same weight and value that it used to, especially now that we know how much gold exists outside of this planet. I think once we start getting into more space travel, that the gold market could even have um, a great um, crash that could come because, again, we see these big gold rocks just flying by us. We know there's gold on the moon, and it's like if we find a huge deposit, and 
then all of a sudden we're like, wow, we can get gold that's just not on this planet. I feel like it might change a lot of the market that way as well. As for currency investing, guys, I think you should just diversify as much as possible. Get some international exposure. Take your time with stuff like that. I also want to do a shout out. And we're going to break into my account right now for you guys. But first of all, here's Matt Money, the guy that I'm suggesting you go and check out. He seems like a pretty awesome dude. He kind of follows the same philosophies. But let's get into the accounts currently worth 110500 in this account. And then the Royal Bank account's worth about $1,000, giving us a total valuation about $111,500 between the four accounts we're going to break down right now for you guys. Starting with uh, the basic tax-free savings account. All the money made in here is tax-free. I set up drips recently. and Let's see the best and worst performers today because, my God, uh, the banks are on a decline. I was recently going to sell some of my banks, and they have never come back, and they keep going down. There's a lot of bears against this. They're lowering all the ratings on this. Earnings come out very soon. I think it's the 22nd or the 21st of August in the next week, anyways. Uh, Canadian Imperial Banks will be releasing earnings, which I'm very excited to see what happens. So in the meantime, because the dividend yield's so high and I still like the banks, I've just set up a drip. Like I said, I think I'm overexposed. Down 15%, uh, getting close to a $3,000 uh, paper loss, which I'll never sell anyways. Uh, but I would like to sell when it comes back. Like I said, I don't care if it's a year from now or five years from now. I'm pretty happy just holding it as it is. So I'm just going to be patient with it. I'm just going to watch it, keep an eye out on it, see what happens. I, you know, We all know the Canadian banks are the most shorted banks in the world. Yes, we could run into some headwinds. I don't think this is just one of the banks. I just, like I said, I, they're banks. They're boring right now. Regulations are keeping them down. I like the dividend and the cash flow. Utilities are, again, in these rough times, always doing the best along with realty stocks because they keep lowering interest rates, which do better for anything to do with REITs. But taking a quick peek here, guys, we've got Alter Group, one of my favorite stocks of all time. I've got set up on a drip. GEO, my prison stock I talk about relentlessly. These are the stocks that I think are going to do amazing in a recession. Apple's got so much money on the balance sheet, they could survive like three crashes all within a week. They're fine. Um, but all these companies in my uh, tax-free savings account, the only ones I'm really worried about, guys, are the banks. I think they have the, the worst exposure, but the utilities, Apple, GEO, Southern, Com like all these companies are going to be fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about them whatsoever. Um, I've got some money sitting in here still that's I have added some capital today. Uh, that's Canadian dollars. Like I said, I bought a few more shares of Johnson & Johnson today uh, because it's right down at my buy price, actually. So my average buy is $130.56. Today's price is $130.51. If it stays down here, I would like it to. I want to keep buying. Uh, along with Starbucks, I'd like to see Starbucks crash. I'd like to see it come down like $10, $20, $30 back to that, back to that level. They've done stock splits. Like, my goodness, this company is on a tear, guys. I think it's on a tear. Uh, I don't know. I just like having it as part of my portfolio. Coffee, I don't think a recession is going to... It might hurt them a little bit, but people still be buying. People like drugs. Starbucks, Johnson & Johnson, all BTI, all drug companies, guys, in my eyes. That's why I love them, because it doesn't matter if times are good or bad. Like my mama always said, mama always said, that it doesn't matter how broke you are, you always got money for cigarettes and alcohol or your beer. Let's be real. Uh, Tesla's my worst performer. I am itching to pick up shares in Tesla right now. I'm a little a little paranoid because I'm gonna have to pay tax on this money. I don't want it to draw money out. I have to make sure there's enough money in my accounts to cover the taxes. And I'm a little worried about all the money in this account. So at the end of the year, I might be selling some of these shares off to put it into my uh, my RSP, which I want to talk about right now because the RSP defers the income and I got 4,000 in here now. I would like to build this up a little more over this year just to avoid any major tax losses and deductions that are coming. And trust me, taxes are going to be paid on these guys, whether I pay them out of my pocket or I sell shares or get dividends to, to pay the bills. I don't know. That's the, the reality of this account that I'm still sitting on, but I'm just not in a rush. I'm going to wait a few more months, see what happens with this. I was planning on using this money to either buy a house or buy, you know, just about an online business. But I think I'm going to be able to afford that outside of this. I kind of want to keep this stern and steady because it's getting to the peak where I've been dying to get to for the last six years, which is $500 a month in dividends, which is what I said. And I'm cusping on the $440 mark right now give or take, you know, $10, it fluctuates daily. And the more I buy stocks, the more it fluctuates. Um, but moving into my final account, you guys know about these accounts in the US, I think they're called 401ks and a Roth IRAs. And, um, and then this is the account, my other account that I purchased some MMN in. And this is an account that I'm going to, have to pay taxes on as well, but I'm putting money aside for tax problems. Uh, in this account, I want to make sure this account stays clean. So I always put the money aside for taxes and then I buy the stocks I want. So I know at the end of the year, uh, this account will be fine. And I'm going to buy some more stocks in here as well. I've got 120 cash. I'm thinking about buying um, 
a Rio can or another realty income stock. I want a Canadian one though, um, because I there's too many uh, issues that come into play when you're buying REITs outside of the country in a non-tax free savings account. You the tax the way it works gets really weird and confusing. Uh, TFSA is the best account to own most confusing companies in, like LLC companies, um, like like realty income companies because the 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 qualified the way they qualify the dividends is a little different. I just know on a tax free savings account on REITs um, all of the tax or all the income is tax um, deferred. So you just get to collect the income tax free. Whereas in here, I think REIT income counts as regular income and because it counts as regular income, I just wanted to be coming from Canada. Uh, to save myself any extra tax issues I might run into. But we can see MMN, uh, the stock that I purchased not that long ago, on your suggestions. You guys actually voted for this company. I did pick up some 3M. And I do want to buy some more of it, actually. I'm down 5%. Uh, like I said, I'm cost averaging in on all of these companies, guys. I'm still buying. And I will continue to buy. I love buying stocks. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video today. It's very lengthy, so I'm not going to break down the dividends in this video or the performance. I just wanted to update you on the overall portfolios uh, just so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, I am up. Currently, I sold Apple, so I took a lot of profit out of here. So this uh, doesn't actually resemble the actual profits I'm having. But right now, this account's worth just under 80 or just over 84000 This account's um, worth 23000 Four hundred, um, or sorry, total market value today with the losses is twenty one thousand nine hundred five on paper, and then this paper value in the RSP is three thousand nine hundred and seventy five, and in my R R or my Royal Bank account, I was gonna say RSP, my Royal Bank account, uh, the total gain valuation combined totals nine hundred ninety six Canadian dollars. Stay cool, stay awesome, guys. I look forward to chatting you real soon.